Hi everybody, I'm Father Mike Kucher, and I'm just here to talk with you a little bit about uh, Eucharistic Adoration. As you know, there is a chapel coming to Shelby County, Perpetual Adoration Chapel, which will be the fifth one in the Batesville Deanery, and I believe the 14th one in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Really, we're very, very blessed by this, uh, this, this new development, this new gift to, to our whole parish and to the larger city. Um, I, it's a funny story of how it kind of came about because evidently that space that we're using for this chapel, which we we're calling the Chapel of Divine Mercy, was used for a chapel when this parish was very young. And then it has become everything from a dining room to a bedroom to an office to um, a storage room and everything else. Um, and then when Father Aaron was here, in 2014, I believe, he wrote a letter to Cardinal Tobin and asked that, that for permission to make that into a chapel. And I, I didn't really know that until I had asked permission for the same thing and discovered that, um, that Father Aaron had kind of beat me to it by a few years, but kind of laid the groundwork for this. And there's several parishioners that have been um, really excited about about this and so it's going to be a really neat gift to the whole to the whole county well even the larger church I, I just want to explain a little bit about what it is because while some people are really excited about it, some people are like what is Eucharistic adoration I'm not quite sure and I just want to explain about it because we are in the main church but as I said we will be in a, in a space dedicated for adoration be a sacred prayer space and uh, you know there are Christians who are not of our, of our same Catholic faith, but other types of Christians who have uh, perpetual Bible chapels. Um, those exist in various churches around the country. And, and so this is not simply a, a Catholic thing. Um, what's Catholic about, about ours will be the fact that it will have uh, the Eucharist in the monasteries. So take a look at this altar. The altar in our chapel will be much smaller. It is against the wall, but it also will have an altar cloth, just like this one. It will have candles surrounding it. And on top of that altar will be something very similar to this, which is a monstrance. Jesus goes right in here, in the middle of the monstrance. And folks, that is the host that is consecrated at Mass, which we Catholics believe becomes the very body, the very presence of Jesus Christ. And so it, Eucharistic adoration at its core is simply spending time with the real presence of Jesus. God is everywhere, there's no doubt about it. But in a very particular way, he is in the Holy Eucharist. Which is why when we come to Mass, we come to church, we genuflect because we reverence Jesus' presence in the tabernacle. It's why when we answer at communion time, when the priest says, or the Eucharist ministers of the body of Christ, we say, Amen, which means I believe and I would stake my life on it. Um, we believe, just as Christians have done for 2,000 years, that that is not simply a piece of bread, that that becomes the very presence of Jesus Christ among us. Super cool. And that presence, that host, that consecrated host, goes in the monstrance. And Jesus waits there on the altar for you and I, or you and me, I'm English major, <laughs> but for you and me to go and to simply spend time with him. Sometimes people say, well, why should I do a holy hour? Why should I take an hour which, in this chapel? And I say, well, we believe that's Jesus. That's reason enough. And if our life is too busy that in the course of 168 hours in a given week, we can't give up one hour for Jesus, I say there's something wrong with our calendar, something wrong with our schedule. It's simply to take one hour per week. Some people might want to do an hour a day. Some people might want to do two or three hours a week, whatever it is. But everybody should be doing at least one. To, to pass an hour with the Lord, because folks, He rubs off on us. He will make you 
He will make us better people, better fathers, better mothers, better children, better disciples, better citizens, better everything. Because when we're in the presence of Jesus, He does that. And it, we cannot help but be affected by it and, and infected by divinity. I'm going to get to that in another video about reasons why we should do a holy hour. The next video, I'd like to look at the scriptural roots of adoration, which is to say, where do we see this practice develop? How do we see it develop in the Bible? And more so, um, what does that mean for our practice of adoration today? But that's enough for today. Just to know the main theme of this video, adoration is spending time with Jesus in a dedicated prayer space in what you might call a cave of silence. And Jesus invites us there to get to know him better, to love him more. Let's see you tomorrow.